Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm back to doing a new movie review this week. After taking a long, a week and a half of a break, I needed one to relax. <clears throat> Not to mention concentrating all these commercial breaks that I found online to post on my YouTube channel as well as my Bitchu channel because I wanted to post some more stuff. And also, I just wanted to watch some movies and shows and stuff. You know, the usual stuff. So there are times when I just didn't have time to do a video to record and review and all. Yeah. But, hey, I'm keeping up. <laughs> so the last movie I did review was Spider-Man No Way Home. That's the Marvel MCU film. That's a follow-up to the last two Spider-Man movies along with the rest of the other Spider-Man movies to join. And yes, even Venom. I still need to check out the second one. Um, and I know this time we get Doctor Strange in the movie. I did forgot to mention that there is going to be a brand new Doctor Strange film coming up uh, later this year. In fact, it's going to come out uh, in May. So my birthday is going to come up uh, this year. I'm going to be 37. <laughs> so I'll be excited to check that out. Yeah. And I know there's going to be even more MCUs coming up, and, and some more you know, superhero films, and more other films coming up for this year alone. Because it happens every year. <laughs> anyway. Well, I decided to review another MCU movie that just came on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, because I just saw it twice now. Uh, once online back in December and this month and by comparison with uh, the last three MCU films you know Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Two Rings Black Widow and of course Spider-Man No Way Home I'm afraid to say this is the worst but it could have been better it's called Externals it's a story about an immortal alien race who just came to protect uh, Earth from being destroyed by these uh, ancient uh, creatures known as the Deviants. So they're trying to save the human race as we know it. But once they destroy them, they be able to do whatever they want. So they, they don't end up going into a battle unless it happens somehow. <laughs> so yes, um, the entire um, race is basically focused on diversity. So yes, you have certain characters that have special powers that they could do anything with. You know, to stop all these um, creatures and bad guys and all. And also, you know, one of them can actually, you know, at least explore and and begin to discover something and also maybe get to know a human so they'll be together or so everything <laughs> so yes this has a great cast to join well it seems to be uh, which includes Selma Hayek and Angelina Jolie which I know both of them were previously in two movies that year and I know they've done a lot of great movies some good, some bad, but you get the idea. But recently, uh, Selma Hayek was in the movie The Hitman's Bodyguard's Wife. Better movie. And Angelia Jolie just made a comeback with the movie Those Who Wish Me Dead. Great thriller. That I saw that year. And I'll say this. I would rather watch those two than this one. Now... This could have been a great idea because of its story. It's very intriguing. Because it's based on the comic, as we know it, by Jack Kirby. And I think this was supposed to be the next generation of superheroes to follow even after the Avengers. At least that's what they were going for. But it does suffer. Anyway, um, 
Now going back to this, yes, I actually saw this on Disney Plus because this is my second time seeing this because I was trying to follow the story and the way this pacing is becoming because it's so slow, sluggish and all. Um, they have the IMAX Enhance. So that means there are certain scenes in the movie where since the film is being shot in scope that there are scenes like most of the action scenes or any other incredible uh, visuals that they use in the movie, um, they would often change uh, their aspect ratio to like 1.77 at the most. So it, it stretches up to show you plenty of details that they couldn't quite fit into the scope. So of course it changes aspect ratios a couple of times. Um, it does the same thing with Shang-Chi recently so this is like a new thing for Disney Plus that sadly they couldn't be putting this on their physical copies that Disney put out you know these physical medias like 4K's, Blu-ray's and even DVD's so I know it's disappointing but you know what I can live with that but hey I have Disney Plus so what can you do well, I figure, you know, at least with a movie that does have um, its jokes, they often do this in MCU films, and some characters that you want to get into, and the story, how it's told, and how it follows, and how we begin to see some secrets behind all this, and what's happening. Well, I know it takes a lot of time to get into well, that's just what I was hoping that this movie was going to go for. Well, I felt pretty bored watching this. Even having to see this twice now, I just... I, the problem was, and I'm going to get to it at the end, the, the screenplay was very complicated to follow. That's why I had to get to that. The pacing was way too long. I mean, this movie is like only 2 hours and 37 minutes, but it felt like it was way too long. Almost nearly 3 hours. Um, pretty much like the running time of Avengers Endgame. But at least that movie, even if it's fan service or so, I mean, that did follow the story very well. You know, and we get to continue with all the characters going around. Even if they, they could have had more screen time or so. Or any other, or they're trying to figure things out to bring everybody back and try to win the war that they have to do. Well, Sternals just took way too long to, to follow what's going on here. And I know, I, I was hoping this was going to be great, but even though I wasn't looking forward to it, because even the trailer seems rather off. I don't know. It just seemed like it didn't have much energy like I was hoping it would be. Well, but I'll give you this, though. Um, at least um, they did support a diversity for this movie. And, of course, you know, each character, as we know it, can do anything. And I know they had censorship going around in certain countries that I know they're trying to fight against, but... They were hoping that Marvel wouldn't be smart enough to to delete any scene out there that's that's taken out of context, which that to me is really totally wrong. I mean, even if the movie was bad, I mean, come on, they they shouldn't be taking scenes like this out of it, because then it just shoot, shows how incompetent, ignorant, and careless you know people can be. Uh, in case you don't know, it had involved with a gay scene. And I'm going to explain that uh, when I get to the review right away. But that's something that should never be censored. I mean, same goes with um, if a character is, um, is a transvestite or anything like that, and you know there's going to be some, some radical scene, they shouldn't censor that. 
I mean, even for its rating, I mean, I, I understand. You know, they're trying to come up with a better excuse for it, but they just, that's just the problem, you know, they, they want to make everything safe. And that's what happens. Well, that's why we're living in this uh, dumbed-down PC world of today. And the way the world is happening nowadays. It's a shame. Well, I don't want to get into that argument, but right now I'm just going to start with my review and, and explain what's wrong with it. You know, even if it takes all day. Anyway, here we go. The movie stars Gemma Chan, Richard Madden, Kamal uh, Nanijani, I don't know if I pronounced his name right, but he was from the, the TV show Silicon Valley that was on HBO. He was in The Big Sick, but he was also um, in the movie Stuber, as well as uh, Mike and Dave's The Wedding Dates come to mind. Yeah, he's a comedian. Uh, Leah McHugh, Brian Tyree Henry, who was from that TV show Atlanta from FX. Uh, Lauren uh, Willoff from The Walking Dead, that's on AMC. And she was recently in the Broadway play Children of the Lesser God. Yeah, she's a deaf actress. Yeah, which is based upon that movie with Marley Matlin and William Hurt. Harish Patel, Kit Harrington, uh, Selma Hayek, as we all know, because she was in films like uh, you know, Desperado. Uh, I just mentioned it already, The Hitman's uh, Bodyguard's Wife, Dogma, um, as well as um, many others that she's done. Angelina Jolie, and she was in several movies like Tomb Raider, uh, as well as Maleficent, um, and just recently, Those Who Wish Me Dead, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, <laughs> I forgot about that. Okay, and and yes, Gia. Um, with uh, Bill Skarsgård, um, David K, Hal Zidman, and uh, Zain Al Rafi. Okay, it's written by Chloe Zhao along with Patrick um, Berli, Ryan Filippo, and Kaz Filippo. It's based on the comic by Jack Kirby, and it's directed by Chloe Zhao. The movie begins at 5000 BC. We meet an immortal alien race that have superpowers. Ten of the entire group known as the Externals. The leader of the pack is Ajax, played by Sema Hayek, along with Cersei, played by Gemma Chan, Icarus, played by Richard Madden, Kingo, played by Kamal Nadajani, Sprite, played by Leah McHugh, Makari, played by Lauren Ridolph, Druid, played by Barry Cahan, Gilgamesh, played by Don Lee, and Fena, played by Angelina Jolie. Yes, each of them are diverse, and they have their special powers of every kind, such as shooting lasers, just like Superman, or um, be able to the ability to run faster than the speed of light, just like uh, the Flash and Quicksilver, also deaf too. Yeah, speaking you know in deaf language, you know sign language. And um, also begin to, to uh, control their minds of all of the, the humans while they're attacking, you know, with war and genocide. Uh, another one that's like a fairy that can actually uh, transform and actually use their own magical powers. And you got one who eventually becomes uh, <laughs> a Bollywood actor 
and he gets to do his own special powers of his own. And one character can actually, and we learn that he's he's gay, but he can also uh, build a key, you know, create all these other uh, certain parts here and there to put together to this new power, or maybe try to find a way to unlock the key to to uh, try to find the secrets that's happening. Also have a power to actually begin to see visions happening. Especially the fact that this one character is a is supposed to be a strong goddess, you know, the warrior. That goes around, you know, killing all these bad guys and all and then we begin to see how traumatic this uh, warrior can be. Anyway, uh, they're being sent by the celestial Ashim to Earth on their starship, which are supposed to be from the planet Olympia, but that led to what's happening. So they went to, so their starship is called the Damo, and they're about to uh, be sent there to exterminate all these ancient creatures known as the Deviants. And they, they, they go around invading the entire planet, you know, nation to nation, land by land, sea by sea, you name it. Going around uh, destroying humankind. So they're their last hope to actually save the humans from those creatures by killing them all and they just uh, destroyed the last one in 1521 so now the group had their opinions being differed over their continued responsibilities and relationship with humankind so now they're being spread across to now you know live their life over the next 500 years waiting for Ishan to tell them that they can leave for sure so that's what led to the pleasant day when Cersei and Sprite were living together in London after Cersei's partner Icarus had left her for centuries earlier. Yeah, they were both married, by the way. But now she's um, having a relationship with a human named Dane Whitman, who's played by Kit Harrington, who they now work at the National History Museum. You know teaching all their students of all the history artifacts and and explore everything that's happening during those period of times until a major earthquake had happened you know they saved them from being um, killed until they find out there was actually a deviant that just came by ready to attack uh, London and that's when Icarus had finally came, you know, using his superpower, just like Superman. Yeah, a lot of those DC jokes is thrown in in the movie. So they're going around chasing after it, and they finally attack and destroy it. And now they're about to go straight to South Dakota, so now they can contact uh, their leader Ajax, who unfortunately died. It might have been because of the deviant attack. So Cersei is posthumously chosen as Ajax's succeeder by granting her ability to communicate with Aishon. So therefore she did contact him that by learning that the missions of the externals was not to fight these creatures, but to prepare Earth from the emergence. And this is where it was kind of tough to follow, but we had to get to that millions of years um, they've been planting seeds of the celestials inside planets where the energy from large populations had allowed them to be born. So the deviants were being sent to destroy the apex predators, as they're called, from each planet to ensure the development of intelligent life. But when the deviants evolved and began hunting the planet's native populations, uh, they created Isham somehow created the externals to hunt him in turn with the reversal of the blip. Earth had to reach a necessary population for the birth of the celestial Tiamat, which results in Earth's destruction. So, yeah. 
we also learned the secret that they're not exactly from planet Olympia, they're just, they were created completely. So it seems like it's, it got erased and reset, for that matter. So now they were kind of shocked about that. But hoping to delay the emergence, the group have reunited with all the other externals. We learned that uh, Druid's residence is somewhere in, in the Amazon rainforest. And I know they, they did found um, uh, Kugo, who is just doing all these uh, Bollywood films. Yeah, he even joins in with his agent, who, who has several of of all these cameras that he got, all these camcorders, video cameras, digital cameras, you name it. Like he has a whole bag of them, only to be left to be destroyed. Yeah, I mean, Drew actually destroyed one, and then later Sprite destroyed the, the second one. <laughs> okay. But I know, they. he was there to be uh, Kugel's guide. So, uh, once um, they were there, they are now being attacked by the Deviants, and they kill them all except Crow, who actually kills uh, Gilgamesh before fleeing. Yes, they actually had uh, those tubes that they can, they'd be able to steal all of the powers, and this is where he transforms into, becomes this particular creature who begins to explain about, you know, how they destroy their race, you know, because of war, and they were responsible by it. So I know Finna tried to remember about what happened. And that's why Finna goes around attacking the group, you know, turning it back against them, but that's why she suffers so much. So they had to try to protect her down. Um, anyway, Fastos uh, had proposed the unit mine, which is a connection between all the externals, that would give uh, Druk enough power to put Tumut back to sleep. Go figure. Um, also using the mind control powers that they had to choose. And this is where we begin to learn about what happened in the secret. Was that Icarus had revealed that Ajax told him that the emergence centuries before that. They'll, they'll suggest him six days earlier that they'll that they got to try to destroy and stop the emergence. Which... At that point on, that's when we begin to find out that now, truth to be told, that Icarus was the one responsible for killing Ajax. Yes, by actually dumping her straight into the cliff where all the deviants were, were there, and they attacked her and they threw her, or at this rate, you know, she was killed by the deviants, and then she... then. Icarus just took Ajax straight into South Dakota and starts to shoot all the fire pretending that you know she was destroyed but it turns out that yes he was the one responsible they're gonna lead to a lot of betrayals happening so now Icarus had took over with Sprite trying to find a way to um, to kill or destroy or maybe not I began to find where the emergence are, are at. Kingo chose to leave, you know, with his partner to actually just continue because he doesn't want to be part of the fight. So, yes, it was up to. So, they didn't want to stop uh, Tia Mutt's uh, Burford fight with his teammates. So, now um, Makari locates the place of the emergence that's somewhere set in the volcano in the Indian Ocean, so that's where Icarus and Sprite are attempt to stop them. So Druid knocks Sprite and Fastos restraining Icarus, while Crow arrives and was killed by Finna. Yes, finally, even though Crow was, was uh, tricking her completely by using her minds, but thank goodness, man, she, she killed her just in time. Drug is unable to put Tiamat to sleep, and Cersei attempts to turn into a marble. While Icarus breaks free from his restraints to go kill Cersei, but finds himself unable to do so due to, you know, them falling in love. 
I didn't want this to happen. So at that rate, um, they finally stopped uh, the emergence. They destroyed the Tiamat. And now Icarus had finally, you know, free himself by, by going straight into the sun. And now they're pretty much all alone. And now they finally uh, decided to move on with their lives. And everyone went back to their place until suddenly the next mission is about to happen. Or what it seems. Well, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, well, it could have been a great MCU film. It just turned out to be the worst. I mean, from the beginning, the middle, and the end. I, I just... It, it just got so boring. It was hard to follow. Um, some of the characters, at least a few of them I can... I can explain at least they're understandable though I mean I do love their special powers that they got but I mean I do love uh, Kingo though because at least you know he, he's at least the one character I can deal with because he's a comic relief and and I agree because he is talented he's very funny and I guess I could deal with Fastos too because uh, at least we know that he's he's gay you know, he just married a an Arab man. They just got a kid. So, that's also important. Uh, I know there was this joke in the movie that... Because he, he just lives at a beautiful house with them. Uh, where Icarus just destroyed the, the table, which was... That he got from the fall collection of Ikea. <laughs> figure um, then the then there's this uh, conflict moment uh, before we got to that was when it happened during the uh, Hiroshima where he might have been responsible for creating this invention where maybe this could actually save them all or the fact that there was a war going around but everything just went completely wrong and, and he was responsible for that uh, I do love the deaf girl, uh, Makari. You know, she can speak uh, using sign language. Yeah, and they had the subtitles to show it, and I'm glad they did. And she gets to run faster than the speed of light. I love those scenes. Um, but, uh,. Other than that, though, uh, some of the characters didn't seem... I don't, wasn't so sure if I can care for half of them. Like, I would say the weakest was Cersei and Icarus. I, I didn't quite follow their relationship together. I mean, yet alone Dane. They're pretty wooden for their performances. Uh... I did care, I mean, Angelina Jolie's performance was pretty tired in a way. I, I guess I don't blame her. Um, Ajax, Elise, you know, tries, you know, played by uh, Samba Hayek. I mean, she did what she could, but even you can tell that she didn't want to be in this. Everything just seems so forced, contrived confusing and labored with its plot and it drags way too long that it almost put me to sleep I'm not kidding I mean I was trying this hard to go in depth with this but wow I don't know what happened it's like it almost lost some of its energy like, everyone's started to seem a little bland at times. But, through their stories, though, I guess some of them did work as they could. But some of them don't. I love the special effects that they use. I mean, the visual effects were stunning, I'll give you that, but... 
the battle scenes were just totally worthless, you know, with the, the emergence, the, the two muds, you know, with the volcano as we know it. Uh, geez, you know, I, I could have had maybe a, a much better battle scene with the Deviants. It's just sad when the, the scenes with the Deviants were more exciting than, than the last battle. So, I, I just really didn't care for it that much. And it's such a shame. Well, apparently they're going to return for their next adventure, if whatever they take. But who knows what MCU film where we get to see these characters on, because they might make an appearance. I mean, they're probably going to make another sequel, I mean, obviously. But will it be better than, than the first movie? I don't know. Um, but they should have done so much better, story-wise. So, and even there are times when they had their own conflicts, you know, they, they talk about the Avengers, and, and they also made their mistakes, you know, they mentioned about, you know, like maybe they weren't dealing, like I think they are having conflicts with Thanos, because after all, Thanos was the one responsible for all the mess he caused, and, and that's what they were preparing for the Infinity War. And he's going around stealing all the gems to create his gauntlets. Yeah. There was also times when Sprite acted like such a spoiled brat that it kind of diminished her character. But it's obviously she wants to be human. And she wanted love. So that's why. Um, there were a lot of references uh, aside from, you know, Batman and Superman. Um, there was also a reference to Peter Pan. <laughs> So at least now we know that it kind of explains the, that Sprite is a fairy, so she's pretty much like Tinkerbell, who really wants to fall in love with Peter Pan, even though Peter would have been falling in love with Wendy, in that sort of way. Well, that's for sure. So what could have been a great movie just turned into... A forgettable fluff, you know, very boring. The pacing's way too long. The story was hard to follow. Its characters have its issues here and there, even though they have their own conflicts. Some work, some don't. Um, therefore, but if you love it, fine. But for me and maybe some others, it's it's pretty weak. It really is. I think this movie deserves to be erased and reset because the script really needs a significant rewrite. And it sure does. So that's externals and I give the movie once and a half star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.